Oh, oh, the screen is trash. I'm so and, sorry. And I All can't right. move anything. Say good morning. Hi, how are you? It's the Todd and Aaron morning stream. I think it's important that I point this out. Today there'll be things that are um, inspirational. There'll be some relative knowledge and maybe some humor. Uh, you're not going to get that here, but hopefully that'll happen to you today at some point. That's inspiring. There's the beginning we hoped Truth for. Truth hurts. All right. Okay. The, what the, was this about a bear footprint? Oh, <laughs> you just gave it away. Well, that's what you said. All right. Don't do it yet. All right. So, I can't believe you just did that. Ouch. And I love to marry you. So anyway, in Utah, tell me some signs of spring. Stop it. Tell me some signs of spring. The crocuses. Right. The croci. The croci. What else? Uh, there's piles of dog poop in our backyard because we haven't shoveled it all winter. There's that. The robins. That's true also. The leaves start coming out. Uh-huh. Those are the signs of spring in Utah. My sister, my dear sister Jennifer, and my nieces uh, um, Stephanie. And Mary Beth. And Mary Beth. Um, Stephanie sent me a photo. This is the sign of spring in New Hampshire. Oh, that's good. He's going to have to the beehive again, isn't he? Spring has awoken, awakened, awake, woke up the bears, uh, and that is the sign of spring. So we're uh, wow. According to the gate stride, uh, we figure it's about a 550-pound black bear. That's not scary at all. Yeah, it makes the Easter egg hunt go really fast. Right? Yeah, and Todd's sister Jennifer's totally intrepid, so she has this working farm and she has these beehives, and they cannot find enough electrical line to discourage the bears from attacking the poor beehives. <laughs> So that's Mary what Beth, you want to do is tick off a bear. Yeah, so yeah. now it's going to be electrocuted and pissed off, so that's going to be great. Right. Well, you hang bacon on the, the live wire uh, just to taunt it, <laughs> bring it in, and teach it a lesson. And then uh, basically the bear comes back the next day with a bear friend. He throws him on the fence and then goes in <laughs> and gets the food anyway. It's just sad, isn't it? I am so excited about this, too. Okay. The morning mountain cam. Let's this go. It's been very meaningful yeah. for you, hasn't and it? And now it's been put on top of a, a, a pole. You can mm. see here. Uh, it's been put on top of a pole, and we can actually, there it is. Look, look how look pretty. It. And you notice something? What? See, it's moving, right? Oh, wow. I is this some... one of those cool new apps where you do it on your <laughs> cell phone, and then you can just move it around with a toggle? No, that's Steve. Uh, oh. He's up on the tower with the camera. Is it cold up there, Steve? It must be. Uh, and so, yeah. look at that. There's a... Uh, that's, that's some really smooth action, though, you have to admit. Yeah. Sorry, you're so chilly, Steve. That's... It's really cold up there still at this point. But wow. there it is, the live action morning cam on GiveHardDaily.com. Okay, well, that's exciting. All right, let's get down to it. All right, I, you know, United. the United thing is just getting, I, every time you think it can't get worse, it just it, it just becomes more and more awful. They had a, a team of lawyers on who were talking about whether or not it was actually legal to throw Dr. Dow off the plane, and they're like, no, it's actually not. You have to be... In the, in the terminal, in the concourse. Once you're seated, there's no legal precedent for you. So what is that? Nine-tenths of the law is possession of I, your butt in the seat, right? Well, nonetheless, it does literally end there. And here's another interesting thing. The four crew members were members of Republic Airlines, which is actually just a separate airline that has sort, sort of a reciprocal agreement with United. You mean with security? No, with, with flying back and forth to different places. Oh. They hadn't purchased any tickets, and they actually, all four of them showed up at the counter after oh. everybody was seated and right. said, oh, we need some seats to get down there. So it's like, well, dudes, you just barely showed up? No. Get in, they, they, it's like a five-hour drive. They could have just sent them there. So one of the big problems is the CEO oh. explained this, the first contact he had with his people. He says, hi, folks. And he went through and he put all the blame on the doctor. Oscar who, Muna said who was that he was dragged out. Yeah, belligerent and that he was threatening crew members. And everyone's like, no, I, I got a camera video of it. There was none of that Then going he on. came out and he doubled down on it and saying it was the guy's fault. Dude, and then after they lost a billion dollars in stock value like Seriously. yesterday, a billion dollars. Someone came up to the CEO and went like this apologize, which he then turned and apologized from his heart. 
one billion dollars worth. Yeah, that that, that would he hit was, my heart pretty hard. In uh, China, they they're very active in China, United Airlines. Yeah, and they were very upset. There was a lot of the political leaders there, and a lot of the social commentators were going, "Why was it an Asian doctor that got beaten?" And there was a lot of oh, allegations. Oh, it's bad enough as it is. Well, no, there's a lot of allegations. Let's get down to this. And it was pretty sad. Let's get so, down. in what? any case, whatever you look at, it's a mess. It's a mess. And there's still a billion dollars behind in United. So it doesn't that, matter what happens now. United is screwed for at least a year. Maybe Maybe a year and a half. I'll That's never my fly them again. Ever. I mean, I won't. I, from something like that, I think a lot of people will feel that way. The, those those uh, new slogans. <laughs> Just. You ready to pull some up again? Because they're awesome. If, if you have them. I will. Because uh, it's the only airline with Fight Club. <laughs> now, you were telling me, though, that there was actually oh something gosh. much better. That, that there was an airline that was actually showing maybe perhaps the right way to do things. Oh, yeah, there was the, it doesn't matter, you can't see it. Go to our Facebook page and you'll see it's it's highly disturbing. So let's say, who, how much did they offer to get off the plane? Uh, I believe they capped out, they capped out at 800. Right. And there were a couple of passengers who, they have on video saying, well, I'll do it for 16. And the stewardess, the flight laughed. attendant actually laughed in their face, which is. $1,600. Not a good sign. A mere pocket change to what Delta did. Because what did Delta do? I'm going to, come here, look at this. Delta offered someone eleven thousand dollars worth of couponing to get to get off a plane, uh, and the lady went, "Yeah." So she got off the plane. There's family trip. There's three of them, mm -hmm. and they said, "You know, we can rearrange all of this." And she said, "I'll do it, but this is what I want." Uh, now demanding on top of eleven thousand dollars she wanted more no she said this is what i want i don't want coupons or vouchers for your airline i want uh visa gift cards good girl because they don't expire good girl you can spend them just about everywhere and it was brilliant good for her and seriously they spent, that's genius they spent two days at the airport eleven thousand dollars okay and you can then, buy a lot of stuff in the gift shop for eleven grand. And then reconnected to her flight fl flight plans for her uh, vacation, and all was good. And she got to have caviar every time she wanted. Wow. Eleven thousand dollars versus getting pulled off a plane, kicking and screaming and bleeding. Eleven thousand dollars, not equal to losing how much on the stock exchange? One billion dollars. Billion. There's a better way to do this, people. That, that was just a whole plethora of just not thinking things through. But let's move on to something more cheerful, something happier. How about our sweet little April? Because I can't help but feel that by now this poor little thing is probably in labor. They say that her udders have filled. Yeah, whatever. We're talking, of course, about I April the Pregnant Giraffe. I haven't seen this yet. Go ahead. Wildlife Sanctuary, Toys R Us, you are getting so much bang for your buck. Is that her? Oh, look, she's talking to one of the other girls going, you know, I, my ankles are swollen. Oh, there's a I guy. I can't believe how wait, wait, there's a guy. I feel right now. He's throwing oh, stuff at and Adder. that guy keeps throwing balls like I'm going to run and catch it at this point. Honey, I, I don't think I, my editors have ever been this sore. I just like to think that's how she's talking. She's, she's an annoying voice. Um, I don't think well, she's it's very even... high. Her vocal cords are stretched. <laughs> so you can see why that would happen. She's not even pregnant, really. How are you feeling about not smoking, by the way? I am really proud of you. By the way, Todd stopped smoking and... He's why? Awesome. Okay, let's he make. He doesn't cheat. He just let's, stops. Let's make a, a list of things why I smoke. I'm an idiot. There you go. Why did I quit smoking? Every reason you can think of, plus six more you haven't even thought of. How many days? You're uh, on your sixth day now. You're almost to a. Yeah, this will actually be your sixth day, so it'll be a full week tomorrow morning. I am so proud of you. And the problem I have now, because I smoked for a long time, don't do it, um, is I have to develop a new laugh. Because the other one where you start laughing and then you'd wheeze and end if up you in know, a cough. If you know a smoker, <laughs> you know a smoker um, there is that thing where it's like you have a reserved laugh because if you really give a guffaw, mm -hmm. you go into a choking fit and then someone has to do the Heimlich on you. And then you start coughing things up so, like, you know, a cat with a fur ball. So I don't know. I have to find my laugh again. Because usually it would be like, ha, 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 And now it's like, ha, 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 whoa. Not that one. Because that's really annoying. <laughs> but I have to see you have a laugh. I have to find my laugh again. I That is one thing I had never thought of. The one thing I will miss, the only way I could ever find you is like almost like chipping your dog. I could find him anywhere within a 50-mile radius because you would hear his smoker's hot hack. I'd be like, <laughs> I'm like okay, there's Todd. He's in the room. But now he's like stealthy. He now, creep up on now him. I'm a ninja husband. 
She doesn't stand a chance. And that is a problem because he has a lot of irritating habits when he sneaks I up. I do. Him. There's pinching. So and coming up, coming up, coming up. Some reactions of uh, Orrin Hatch running again at 82. And he's pondering that. And there's some questions about John Huntsman's son maybe running against him. Or and else. sea monkeys. And that's all coming up next. Okay, it's right after Daisy. She's in the Gifford Daily Newsroom right now. It's brought to you by Columbus Travel. Columbus Travel having their big April sale. You can save hundreds of dollars off your vacation. Go to columbusvacations.com. Also by our dear friend March at Executive Transportation, the official limo service for the Todd and Aaron show. A discreet professional service to the airport or an exciting night out. Just go to executiveutah.com. And all Utah plumbing, whatever you have managed to break, John can fix it. And there's also 24-hour emergency service. Uh, if you're thinking about your, uh, your swamp cooler, air conditioner, or sprinklers right now, it would be a very good time to call. Allutahplumbing.com. Daisy, what's going on today? Hello, everyone. Here's what's making news Wednesday on GebhardDaily.com. The search for a missing Saratoga Springs hiker has come to a tragic end. The body of 28-year-old Benjamin Kreitzer was discovered by family members Tuesday afternoon about a mile up Ferguson Canyon. Police say Kreitzer was in an area a couple of hundred yards from the nearest trailhead and appears to have died in a fall. Search and rescue teams had been looking for Kreitzer since he was first reported missing late last week. And a 22-year-old American fork man has died after falling from a 400-foot cliff in Dead Horse State Park Sunday. The San Juan County Sheriff's Office says Gary Nathan Abbott was camping with friends at the time of the accident. How he fell has yet to be determined. Senator Bernie Sanders is coming to Utah. The firebrand politician will be featured speaker at Democrats Come Together and Fight Back tour. He'll be joined by new Democrat Democratic Party chairman Tom Perez. Organizers say the two are looking for a venue large enough to hold Bernie's supporters. In the last two visits, he attracted thousands to This Is The Place Heritage Park and West High School. And now a quick look at Wednesday weather, where we'll see temperatures in the ballpark of 70 degrees under mostly sunny skies. Thursday's highs will be in the upper 70s. If we close our eyes and click our heels, we might even hit 80. Wouldn't that be lovely? That's it for now. More headlines 24-7 on GebhardDaily.com. All right. If you like plumbing, no one likes plumbing. They don't. They don't like plumbing. It, the only time you notice plumbing is when it breaks, when it leaks, when it drips, when it clogs. When it doesn't turn on the way you want it this to. This is John from All Utah Plumbing, and what he does is everything you don't want to do um, as far as fixing your home. You got dripping, your water heater is dripping, it's rusted, something's going on, you don't know what it is, John is the guy to call All Utah Plumbing. AllUtahPlumbing.com will give you more information, but really a phone call, call them at 801-652-4755 for all the help that you need. All right, so uh, Orrin Hatch. <laughs> senator Orrin Hatch now, who of course is the longest serving Republican senator, uh, they had just been talking to him saying, are you ready to retire? There's rumors that John Huntsman's son might would like to run for your seat. That what he, you is thinking? The, he is the, uh, the, the, the United States Senate fossil. Mm. Well, yeah, but he's, but he's also, I mean, there's always been the arguments that, that, that he's one of the most powerful senators, you know, on the Hill. And he, this gives a lot of advantage to Utah, a lot of questions. So public policy uh, polling did a uh, thing just checking with Utah and saying, what do you think? Are you a likely voter? Right. Are you going to vote? And they said that 71% of Utah's likely voters believe that Hatch should hang it up. 19% uh, say that he should go for an eighth term. Um, he's 82 years old. The man does not look it. He wears 82 really well. But so, so he took it to the street. Watch. What do you think of Orrin Hatch? <laughs> what, what, what do you think of Orrin Hatch running for Senate? I don't even know who that is. Never heard of him. Isn't he dead? Is he like dead or I don't know. I don't know much about the guy, but he already, just the name sounds very douche, like a tyrant. I don't know. It, as long as his mind is working and he isn't doing anything crooked or anything illegal, uh, yeah, he should run for office. What do you think of Orrin Hatch running? I don't even know who he is. Orrin Hatch is a worthless piece of I think a lot of people think he's been in office too long. 40? That's like half his life. I remember six years ago when he said it'd be his last term. Uh, 
he might be dead before he even makes offers, thinking of how old he is. He originally ran on term limits, and you gotta imagine six years from now he's running for another term. And here we are, six years later, he's running for another term. Wow, yeah, he yeah he needs to retire. He is a period. I think there definitely should be term limits on the Senate. Isn't he a senator here or something? As long as he's still functional, you know, he, he's able to do his job, you know, with professionalism, you know, I think he's, he will do a good job. Well, why don't they put someone new in the office and get Hatch out of there? He's not really doing anything for us anyway. What do you think of Orrin Hatch running for Senate? <laughs> Orrin Hatch is a Mormon. I don't, I don't know who that is. His time is coming to a short end, and he should enjoy life with his family and not have to sit in an office all day, every day. What do you think of Orrin Hatch running for Senate? No, no comment. I'd say he's out of touch, yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of new issues popping up in the world that he's probably very unfamiliar with, and we need people who know what they're talking about with the situation, so. Don't you think he's a bit old? Super old. I'll bet he's got a nicer house than I freaking do. That is far too long. They should, they should really let someone, I mean, I guess they could let, keep letting him do it, though, because he could, he's probably gonna die off soon enough that they might as well just let him live it out happy. But he has, he has set records for the longest serving Republican senator in history of this country, so that does tell you something. So I'm not surprised, bit disappointed, but not surprised. I'm still trying to figure out which is my favorite. <laughs> was it the guy speaking into his ski pole? That was, I think it was his umbrella, or the girl that said, that's like half his life. 82. That's like half his life, which is 164 years old, which I'm not, I'm not doubting that that, what was the numbers again? You said the, the uh, it was, of... It's pretty intense. I mean, they're, at this point there, it's over 70% saying, you know, dude, hang it up. Let somebody else have a chance. But uh, he is the longest serving in Republican history, so that's pretty impressive. And he's walking, so yeah. I'm impressed. After that level of stress, I would, I would be fed through a tube. The really. sea monkeys of Utah, the Great Salt Lake, are under attack. What? A little history on sea monkeys, shall I? This is terrible, yes, of course. All right. First of all, sea monkeys uh, are in the Great Salt Lake. It's brine, brine flies, brine shrimp. It's not so, like it is on the back of the comic books when you were a kid, though, when they had, like, the cute hot lady on sea the monkey. Sea, on the sea monkeys, yeah. right. And you were supposed to be able to teach them tricks and stuff. And Dad's mowing the lawn. Remember that? Dad's mowing the lawn. It's not like that. Yeah, the Great Salt Lake is actually the predominant supplier of sea monkeys. I think it's one of two places mm -hmm. in the world. And mm -hmm. so what they do is the sea monkeys, they actually take the, uh, the brine shrimp eggs and then they dry them and then they put them in the sea monkey kit and you get them and you get to do that. But that's not the major reason. I mean, that's fun. That's food though, isn't it? Aren't they like fish food or something? Japan, they, they buy them dried, oh. the eggs. And so when they throw them into the bin, bins of bins, pens, pens, underwater pens of shrimp, uh, they go down and they hatch and the shrimp eat them, but because... So they're kind of like carnivorous then. But because because the, the brine shrimp don't die and they keep floating around till they're eaten, it doesn't make the water toxic, like if you threw in regular food. Oh, If they didn't point. eat it, poison. Yeah. So anyway, the, as interesting I as that is... I did not know that. Um, and did you know that uh, a majority of the ant farms, you know ant farms, come from southern Utah? Our big red ants, the mean ones, yeah. good for you. Fire ants. Okay, so yeah, here's we're the gonna deal. teach your kids all about it. This is why they're in danger, the sea monkeys, because a new a new thing has come along. Say that. Bioluminescence. Show that. There we go. Now, if you see here, oh beautiful. This is kind of algae, right? It's gorgeous. And basically, if you've ever seen the video um, or videos of a boat passing through water or someone walking through where this... Oh yeah, and the plankton are, are like moving around and it's it glows. It glows. It's so pretty. And it glows behind ships, you see it, and it's not like you're crushing animals, it's plankton. It's uh, actually um, phytoplankton. And that ball is contained, it's sealed, and all you have to do is once in a while, get it in the sun, photosynthesis, then you can bring it in. Let them stretch. And then at night, you just tap it or swirl it gently. That's so cool. I want one. I do. I want too. like dinoflagellates, is yeah. that what they call them? Well, sounds I like a gas one. problem. Yeah, so that's it, that's it right there. So I oh, think. No, I'm totally, I'm totally, right? totally going to order Who this. Who would not buy one of those? Yeah, they're adorable. And you and don't you, have to teach them any tricks, you just have to shake the bowl. And it's not hard. They do. Well, not like they that. No, <laughs> just like. It's like you're tap. mixing a drink, right? No. no. <laughs> so, Poor little plant. So they're thing. under attack. Um, um, well, I, I would prefer the dino. Flagellates, I gotta be honest. I because do too. really the sea monkeys were not all that exciting. They weren't. I feel like we were all a little disappointed in their in their 
Speaking of being under attack, England is in for it. We'll tell you about it coming up next. <laughs> We're brought to you this morning by Executive Transportation. Elegant service, professional style. Go to executiveutah.com. And All Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best. 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. And by Columbus Travel, the best travel deals on the planet. Be sure to take advantage of our April sale, columbusvacations.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron morning stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud, and gepharddaily.com? happening in England as we speak. Uh, poor Daisy. Uh, Our beautiful news, she, she's going to be going back, she, actually. She's weeping. Two weeks. She's yeah. weeping right now because the footing is going to be fairly treacherous. Because a mild winter. <laughs> These are the weirdest stories. I'm so sorry. And you get so excited. That's the creepy I part do. today. But no one else would tell you about this. So, this is true. So here I am. Mm -hmm. A mild winter. They are expecting an explosion in the populations of slugs and snails. England is under attack by snails? Uh-huh. Voracious appetites they have. Oh, okay. But here's Zoe, our daughter. This is the answer to their problem. The secret weapon. That is a, yes, a one gallon storage bag and it is chock full of, uh, of snails. Now, before we show the video, before, Aaron, would you like to explain how this I have no idea how this, this started, but basically, so I stepped on moments and I said, no, don't do that, sweetie, because then all the little eggs just come out of the snail and they still are there. She goes, oh, we'll pick them up and put them in a Ziploc bag. Now you will notice though, she did have like some nice green leaves in there. She wanted them to have a little snack. And I, I and appreciate so it because the, they go right after my hostas because I garden and hostas get eaten. And once they're eaten, they look like that the rest of the summer. And Zoe's it's very upset. She's like, I've tried to reason with the snails. They won't, so this is our next step. So we walk around the neighborhood after- It used to be, used after to rain be showers. like 10. She'd gather 10. It was like, yay. And then Aaron got involved. No, someone had to take around the neighborhood. So now this kid, we'll get like a Ziploc bag full. And, and people are, are used to us like digging around in their bushes. And they're like, yeah, hi, Zoe. Hi, Aaron. That's great. You and so then said, we place them on top of the garbage can. And we say, we're going to leave them here for the snail guy. The snail guy is going to come and take the snails up to the mountains for the snail jamboree, where there are many, many green things for the snails to eat. We did. But, you know, it's the jump that you made between... Um, getting a bag with 10 in them, in them and then cruising the neighborhood for their snails. There, something happened between those two points in your life that made... Zoe's an overachiever. You're, you know, her little legs grew and they got all longer. Maybe you. You let her down this path. No, I really do think it was Zoe. That was a Ziploc full of snails. Spending right. my late days right. knee deep in mud, picking up snails really was not my plan for quality time with my daughter. She loves it. I thought we were going to have it, that. And she's usually wearing like her aerial outfit or, you know. Well, let's find out. <laughs> Here she is. This is Zoe. Yeah. Zoe, what have you been doing? Snail hunting. And what did you catch? Snail. Well, let me see. For Daddy to see. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And what are you going to do with those snails? We're going to bring them up into mountains. Uh-huh. And then and? you have a snail jamboree, right? Right. And you put in some berries so they had dinner, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And you're eating them. Mm-hmm. Are you the best snail hunter in the world? Yes. Yes, she is. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Who's the best? Is that the grossest thing you've seen in a long time? But some of them are actually quite pretty. Oh, my. Not it's, that stuff. thing is tight, full. I mean, just ee, barely zipped it. That's horrific. Well, see, but at least we know Zoe's got a future. All right, so in so England, springs upon us. Hot weather today, seventy-five degrees. John from All Utah Plumbing. Well, he's going to teach us something. So here we are at the air conditioner. So now I'm going to show you the care that I want okay. you to take care of on this. It's really nice that you don't have shrubs all over. Does that affect it? <laughs> Big time. Okay. It needs to breathe. Okay, Todd, let's kneel down, and I'm going to show you a few things. The air from the outside, out here, goes through the coil. Mm -hmm. That's why we like that you don't have anything around your, you know, shrubs. So this is like a radiator for cars. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly All like right. radiator. Then the fan sucks through and blows up, so it's good that you don't have anything 
above this, otherwise it could sit and recirculate and not be efficient at all, it'd be horrible. All right. and, and it's not good for the piece of equipment either. Now as professionals, what we do, and I don't like homeowners to do this, is we like take this completely apart. Right. We pull this off, we clean from the inside out and everything, and then we check each and every component that's on here electrically, um, and just how it's working. And but that's above homeowner's pay grade, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think so, okay. just because right. it is 220 uh, that we're working with. And 220 volts hurts, my friends. I used to have straight hair. And now it's time to get the hose, and I'll show you how to clean it out. Oh, I'm getting the hose, evidently. All right, well, here's the hose. Okay, Todd. So really it's simple. I'm gonna start at the front and you just add an angle, always at an angle. Don't use a hose attachment right. or anything just like wide, that wide. because we don't want to bend these. Oh yeah, because these are soft. Don't okay. bend them. Stop touching them. Oh, sorry. Jeez. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so you're just rinsing basically kind of at a 45 degree angle, maybe a little bit more. And see how it's just rinsing the you know cobwebs, different things like that, leaves. So this makes it more efficient. Correct, more efficient because it can breathe and, and just be able to really do its job. So Todd, what I want you to do is do just like this all the way around the unit, three times a year. So spring, mid-summer, and then the end of summer, you know, something okay. like that. So on a scale from one to 10, how am I doing? I think you're doing really good, Todd. See, that's all you need to do. He's helping us. He's yeah, helping us. It's nice though because he does tell you the level of things that you can do for yourself. Yeah. And when you get to the point where he'll also go, don't try that stuff anymore. Just call me. Because traditionally he'll pick up the phone whenever Todd calls and go, what have you broken now? Anytime you're dealing with professionals, as soon as your eyes glaze over, that's when you need one. Okay, yeah, so anyway, so. I am so excited about this. So the Cubs won the World Series last year. And, and as soon as I heard the story, it's like, oh, that's right, they did. Since 1908. Oh, are you kidding? This was it a was, miracle. We were we were bawling. Don't you remember how incredible it was? Just even if you don't even root for them, it was right. just like you waited so long. We're so happy for you. And the Cubs were like, yeah, there was. It was like they can't do this. And the Cubs fans were like, this is the year. That was their saying. And then later in the season, it was like maybe next year. Uh, Every single time they, they were plucky. It. So it was their, incredible. Their home game uh, the, the other day, uh, they were all excited because you have this big pregame. The fit, the stands were packed and they had this big thing where they actually take the pennant which is a big flag you might have seen them down at the, the Delta Center which is still called the Delta Center and they slow motion and the lights and the fireworks and they rise the, the flag raises up in front of the entire stadium and ah, everybody gets crazy and they were playing the Dodgers and anyway they they had the, they had a um, they had a um, rain delay and I'm going to tell you what happened can I do that Coming up next? Coming up next. Merit Medical. Why work for fast food wages when you can start at Merit for a whole lot more? Merit Medical. Great products, great people, a great company. Learn more at merit.com forward slash careers. The Law Offices of Robert J. DeBry and Associates with offices in Salt Lake City, Sandy City, and St. George. Check them out at robertdebry.com. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is actually available anytime at gepharddaily.com. Just click on the Todd and Aaron page. All right, Columbus Travel is having their big April sale, and I'm excited about this because if you haven't been planning on a vacation or thinking maybe you couldn't afford one, or you're kind of like listlessly going through the internet and trying to find some good airfares, why not think about just going there first and getting it over with? See, the nice thing about columbusvacations.com is you can go on, you can sign up their newsletter, and they'll tell you all of the flash sales that are happening that week, the last minute ones. But to be honest, it's a lot easier just to go through them. The average customer saves $452 on their vacation by booking it through an, a good travel agency like, like this one because basically Columbus has all the best deals. They can put packages together and save you a boatload of money. And boy, right now their cruise sale especially is freaking amazing. There's so many little extras that you can get like free shore excursions or free drinks or free uh, premium food or kids even come sailing free with you. All you have to do is go to Columbus Vacation com for more information. Now, tell me about the Cubs because this was right. really a sweet experience last year watching them win. So just to recap, they won the championship last year. It's opening game. They're going to bring that whole big thing at the beginning of the game, the mm -hmm. whole flag and the pennant and everything. Crowd's going to go crazy except for there was a rain delay, which means the crowd did not move, by the way. 
They oh, were, you were after your last year? No, they no, they're there for the duration. in their seats. And, and so during the rain delay, what did they do? On the big screen in center field, what they did is they showed a certain TV show. Uh, one of the people who retired, Grandpa Rossi, one of the heroes of the Cubs, uh, joined the, the staff and the cast of Dancing with the Stars. Oh, that's right. He's on Dancing with the Stars this year. So they were up last night. And they all watched it. The whole crowd watched it. That is and awesome. And they were cheering and going crazy. And in the bullpen, they were kind of ticked off. He didn't get a higher score. And they were all like, <laughs> are you kidding me? He needed a 10. Oh, oh my gosh. Look at those feet, man. That was a move. How perfect is that? I love that combination, though. And you're right, though. There's a pleasing symmetry. And he's much... Night, he's debuting. And Ross is, uh, Rossi is m much admired. I mean, they loved him. Well, if you saw him last night, he was really charming. He's one of the most entertaining <laughs> and fun sports figures they've had on the show. What a strange combination, though. But I love it that. Was perfect. And you know the cheers were deafening, too. That's oh, the it, it was perfect. And, like, every time he made a move, because he did fairly well. Ah, the crowd would go crazy. I think that's wonderful. Uh, this is a headline uh, that's being repeated ac across the country for the last hundred years. Uh, this happened in Pennsylvania. Easter is upon us. Um, uh, quaint little things. Your mom likes to hide uh, eggs and stuff, and we have fun. We dye them, and you guys make treats, and we go out, and we have a nice little calm Easter it's gentle. egg. gentle. Right. Now, given the, our pastor and radio for Todd and me, and by the way, for all just getting to know each other, Todd and I have done morning radio in this market in Salt Lake City for, what, 20 years? And uh, so we have seen probably every possible permutation of an Easter egg hunt because we've been forced to host them. And, and there's a level of carnage in some of them. Okay, let me do this. <laughs> that you can't begin to imagine. In Pennsylvania, uh, the uh, volunteer fire department, so these are, not, uh, these are professionals. They've been trained somewhat. It's basically a controlled burn, uh, but that's the way they work. Um, and they've decided that they're going to call it off. They're going to call it off because of last year. The big year. community Easter egg hunt. We took an open field, like a soccer field, and we put some little stakes and some ribbon around saying like this is... Like these are the three to five-year-olds. Th and this over here is... These the are the six to nine-year-olds so that, you know, we can have age separation. And we had like 800 pounds of candy. All the eggs and all the specialties. It was enough to turn everybody's blood to corn syrup within like a 16-mile radius. It's not like there was a lack of candy. So we had a 20-person team of our you know, a group taking boxes of this and just walking across that space and shaking them out. And there were hundreds of boxes. And then we said, go. <sighs> That's where things went terribly wrong. I actually saw a grown man hip check a six-year-old to get a piece of candy. This is what it looked like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Precisely. No, right? it was horrible. It was moms were clothes lighting other little kids to it get was, the eggs first for their five-year-olds. And, and there was like weeping and wailing and children falling all over the place. There was one mom who actually grabbed the other kid's basket, shook it out in her kid's basket, dropped it and walked off fast like, that wasn't me, I don't know who Yeah, and that. I think she was even diabetic. She was just really mean. And these are the parents. It wasn't the kids. The kids were all fine. They all stayed in their little uniform groups. It was the parents. They were pure evil. And what set us up for this is the year before it went so well because that morning we had a spring snow and it was like four to six inches of snow. So we got on the radio and we said, come down anyway. What the heck? And come on down. And what we established was a drive through Easter egg hunt where the cars were just, we all had ears on, and the cars would come around through the parking lot, 800 pounds of candy. And we throw eggs into the open windows. It was no, awesome. Not like this, like this. We just throwing it in. I mean, the kids but were like very freaking civilized. out. Yeah, it was very civilized, very well bred. And then the next year. So there's two things we've learned. That's about it. <laughs> don't, don't judge a baby contest ever and don't have an Easter egg hunt because parents are jerks. I, I can't blame those firefighters and it's too bad too because it's basically it's not really ever the kids that I've seen. It's just horrific. You must suffer because of your parents. Matter of fact, Sorry. if you like contact sports, find an Easter egg hunt and go down to a tailgate and get some chairs, a couple beers and sit back and enjoy the fun. It's like roller derby with candy. It really, yeah. It really Actually, is. That's like the best description I think I've ever heard. That's a great idea. I just it really came up is. with. All right, so here, evil genius. We'd like to end today, and end our show mm -hmm. with the newest, fastest 
roller coaster, and this happens to be in England. Oh, I love these. Uh, zero to 90 miles an hour in under five seconds. Which, Get out. Which is pretty darn fast. Fast in oh the most, God. almost every car I can think of, even the fastest one. Yeah, I don't think the Teslas can five, do that. Five seconds to 90. Anyway, right up there. And highest, tallest. So they had the uh, first ride. And what, I would, can what you imagine honor. what you would do to be the first on that, like the first car on the roller coaster? What, what an honor that would be. And as yeah. you'll see, these gentlemen dressed up in suits, and these people were being filmed as they went. And I want you to keep an eye on the guy on the left-hand side okay. and, his, gonna... and his neck. Let's watch. <laughs> Like I have pitch. Oh, his face is all bloody. Oh, he's still doing it. He's like, I'm bloody. What the heck? Oh my god. That is. All right, epic. All right here we go. Slow motion. Guy on the left. Oh, ow. And it's he's going so fast. The pigeon is stuck against his neck. Oh man, that poor pigeon. <laughs> now it's like reaction shot. <laughs> <laughs> That is hysterical. Uh, and then the hand goes back up. I'm coated in blood. He's like, I'm pigeon hit me. Now you think he's going to freak out at this point. Oh my God, I'm coated and, in blood. And it, oh dear Lord. Oh, and then he goes, Woo! <laughs> and he goes up again. Yay! <laughs> like if a boss. If you're going to get hit by a wild bird on a roller coaster, that's the way you do it, you by the way. You handle it like a boss. And then after amazing. he got up, he's like, Hope you had a fun time today. This has been, <laughs> thanks very much for joining us. Don't this, forget, you can also catch us anytime during the day or night on GetPartDaily.com because you know you're going to want to show the pigeon one to somebody. That was oh epic. Oh my gosh. All right. So thanks very much, Todd Nan, morning stream on GetPartDaily.com. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>